Hello students, today we will be dealing with our topic that is energy in which we will be learning about the definition, the various sources of energy in which we will be focusing on our sources of energy that is the renewable energy sources and non-renewable energy sources and energy conservation measures. So starting off with the basics that is the definition of energy. The simple definition of energy says that it is the power derived from the utilization of physical and chemical resources especially to provide light and heat or to work machines. And then the other online free dictionary definition of energy defines that it is a usable heat or power and as a source of usable power such as petroleum or coal. So basically energy can be classed into two that is renewable energy and non-renewable energy. So moving on with the first one that is the renewable energy sources. These renewable energy sources generally include wind and hydroelectricity. Wind that we observe in our day to day life and even hydroelectricity because of which our life is not really possible. Biomass fuel such as wood is also described as conditionally renewable source as its use and collection requires management of biodiversity impact from harvesting, then sustainable production from woodlots and maintaining air quality in urban centers through efficient operation from wood heaters. So here is something we know about renewable energy sources. Then moving on we will be knowing now something about the non-renewable energy sources. These non-renewable energy sources include fossil fuels such as oil, the natural gas, coal and fuels are derived from oil including the oil shale and tar sand. These energy sources are used as fuels. Fuel is burned in machinery in order to create motion. This you will be observing when you are driving your vehicle. After creating the motion and it will even create the heat which can be observed in your home heating systems. So these are few examples which you will be observing in your day to day life. Then when these fuels are used to produce electricity, the motion or the heat causes the generator to rotate. And once it rotates, thereby it will produce electricity. And this electricity is thus used in our day-to-day -day life in our house as well as the various business verticals. The simple definition of energy says that it is the power derived from the utilization of physical and chemical resources, especially to provide light and heat or to work machines. And then the other online free dictionary definition of energy defines that it is a usable heat or power and as a source of usable power such as petroleum or coal. Now we will be knowing something in detail about the various sources of energy. There are many sources of energy. The most common source of energy is fossil fuels which include oil, coal and gas. These fossil fuels were formed when the ancient plants and animals died hundreds of millions of years ago. As their bodies decayed, they were mixed with the mud and sand and therefore buried deep in the earth. And the compression and heat over thousands and thousands of years have changed them into fossil fuels. Although we use the fossil fuels and which is the most common power source, but it is not the only one. Here are some other power sources which we use in our day to day life. Now let us see what are they. So firstly coming to our own oil and gas. So how do we extract it, oil and gas? Oil and gas are firstly used to produce electrical energy, mechanical energy and heat energy. And this oil and gas are extracted or are pumped from wells which are deep in the earth or under the ocean and once they are extracted they are then sent through the various pipelines to be refined or cleaned. 
you have a sedimentary rock which is called as a shale which may also contain oil and in order to extract oil from this shale what you have to do is you have to heat at high temperatures the oil containing shale and thereby you can extract the oil then the next type of power source is the wood and coal the wood and coal are also used to produce electrical energy mechanical energy and heat energy coal as you all know is mined underground the earth's surface it is burned in its natural form to produce heat coal can also be converted into a liquid as well as a gaseous form then moving on to the next type of power source that is the nuclear power nuclear power is used to make electricity inside a reactor atoms from a fuel called uranium are split by neutrons this energy is released as heat which changes water into steam these are the various normal sources of energy but now we have to deal with uncertainties with the non renewable energy sources while these power sources are used to produce most of the earth's electricity it is important to remember or to focus on the fact that these power sources some of them are non renewable that is they cannot be naturally restored in a short period of time hence we always run the risk of exhausting our supply of non renewable power sources non renewable resources consist of any energy and material stocks that are generated very slowly through natural processes these stocks can be thought of as existing in fixed finite quantities and once these are extracted they cannot be regenerated in the same time scales as expected by the humans now we will be moving in detail about the various sources of energy they are basically classified into two first one is renewable energy and the second one is non renewable energy sources so we will be focusing on the first one that is renewable energy sources so as i have earlier told you that renewable energy sources is a source of energy that can never be exhausted so how can we obtain these renewable energy sources or what are the various ways in which you can obtain this renewable energy source that can be through solar yes that is the solar power and then wind that is through windmills and then you have water that is hydro power through a animal manure waste products and burning wood that is the biomass fuel and even with the hot water springs that is the geothermal energy now starting off with the solar power solar power is a renewable energy source because it is provided by the light of the sun which is definitely holds the advantage of being free non pollutant and definitely everlasting so what happens in the entire process that is how is the solar power generated when the sun shines on the solar cells they absorb its energy causing a reaction that is a chemical reaction which generates electricity just like the one which you observe in a solar powered calculator and these solar power also provide electricity to pump water and it will even provide a uh, power for communication equipment and even provide electricity to our homes then moving on to the next type of renewable energy source it is the water power which is also called as hydro power this hydro power can produce mechanical and electrical energy dams as you all know used to contain flowing river water which form the lakes and reservoirs and as water flows downhill it is channeled to a turbine the flowing water when hits the turbine which will in turn hit the generator thus producing electricity water power has been used not only for generating electricity but as i've told you it is also used for mechanical energy mechanical energy which is used for grinding pumping and running machinery and then moving on wind power wind power is the energy that is produced directly from these windmills that is as and when the wind flows in it will rotate the mill and it will generate electricity or the wind power 
This resource is definitely free and renewable and it also emits no harmful greenhouse gases which is these days depleting our entire environment or affecting the environment very negatively. Then moving on to the last type of source of renewable energy that is the biomass energy. Biomass as I have told you is the organic material which is stored sunlight in the form of chemical energy. Example it can be the wood, the wood waste, the straw, manure, sugar cane etc. By the process of photosynthesis solar energy can be converted into biomass which in turn can be stored and used as fuel in various forms. There are many ways to use this biomass. And now we will be learning about the various alternative energy sources that is the non-renewable energy sources. We can start off with the geothermal. Geothermal is the heat energy from deep in the earth using special pipes which are buried underground. In many areas, pumps circulate water that is cooled in summer and heated water from the always mild earth temperature several feet below the surface. This water is used in heat pumps that can cool and heat homes, buildings and even provide hot water for the same. Then the next type of energy source is the ocean thermal energy. When you hear the word ocean thermal, it is something related to ocean, isn't it? The oceans collect and store huge quantities of solar radiation in the form of heat. And most of the heat is generally stored on the surface of the sea water while temperature of the deep water is generally very low. And the temperature difference of the both is converted into electricity. Interesting. Then. Moving on to the next one that is the hydrogen energy. When hydrogen is combusted, it combined with oxygen to form water. And in the entire process of the hydrogen combining with oxygen, it will a large amount of energy is released. The same which is used in the rocket engines. Now moving on to the next type of energy source that is tidal power. You know about the tides, right? That is the gravitational pull of sun and moon along with the earth's rotation causes the tides. Hence, the tidal movement of water represents a great deal of energy. As water flows from higher level to a lower level, it can be used to generate electricity. Tidal power is trapped by placing a barrage across an actuary and forcing the tidal flow to pass through turbines. Water power converts the motion of waves into electrical or mechanical energy. Energy in the water in the form of kinetic energy or temperature differences or salinity gradients can be harnessed and used. Since water is about 800 times denser than air, even a slow flowing stream of water or moderate tree swell can yield considerable amounts of energy. Then moving on to the next one that is the nuclear energy. As you have already known how what is all about nuclear power. The same is that. It is the energy which is trapped inside each atom. It can be used as an important supplementary source to coal and hydro power which can generate electricity and has potential applications in industries like medicine, agriculture and research. The increasing demand for power has led to considerable fossil fuels burning, which has in turn has an adverse impact on the environment. In this context, efficient use of energy and its conservation is of paramount importance. It has been estimated that nearly 25,000 megawatts can be saved by implementing end use energy efficiency and demand side management measures throughout India. So the following are some of the energy conservation measures at home level. As an individual, you can make a lot of difference to the entire nation. That is, you can do the basic activities or you can take these simple measures to conserve energy from your rent. That can be done by shifting the consumption away from the peak times. Avoid adding the power demand during peak time. 
that is what are the peak times it is generally between 10 am to 8 pm so you can by simply using some of our common electrical appliances before or after this time frame that is you can use washing machines geysers irons building water pumps which can all be shifted easily without much inconvenience then moving on you can keep your acs at 24 degrees celsius acs are possibly the biggest cause of any summer power crisis every time one or more ac is switched on and every time the temperature is leveraged by one more degree a huge load is added to the system we can however work towards uninterrupted power if we give up freezing for cool enough instead we all shall go for 24 degree celsius this summer which is actually quite comfortable and it's our role to conserve our energy from our end switch off from the plug point whenever we leave a plug point on after switching an electrical appliance off with the remote power is still on and being consumed in standby mode and no small amount either these little wastages amount for an unbelievable 5 percent of the city's power consumption and you will agree that's a sheer waste so after the usage what shall we do let's switch off our acs tvs washing machines microwaves geysers and mobile chargers right from the plug point every single time we use that after knowing the various conservation measures now we will be knowing few tips of energy saving starting off with lighting whenever you're not using your lights or bulbs you have to make sure that you generally switch it off and then replace bulbs with tube lights in cfl and you have to utilize natural daylight that is you can either use uh, light colored curtains or uh, lightweight curtains so that the uh, light goes to and fro and then de-dust the lighting fixtures to maintain illumination and you have to use task lighting rather than brightening the entire room then coming to the electric iron which you use in your day-to-day -day life to iron your clothes you have to make sure that you don't iron any sort of wet clothes and you have to always select the iron boxes in such a way that they have automatic temperature cut off and then moving on to the next one that is fans you have to always replace conventional regulators with that of the electronic regulators then moving on to the refrigerator you should never open your refrigerator door frequently and you have to see that you set the thermostat in medium cooling position and you should never keep your refrigerator too cold and defrost as and when necessary and whatever food is there in your refrigerator you have to make sure that you always cover the food and do not overload the refrigerator then moving on to the next one what is the other electric appliance which you use in your house it is the washing machine you have to always run the washing machine with full load because if you use it half load it will waste some sort of energy and you have to always use the shortest cycle time and use optimal quantity of water and rather than drying it in the electric dryer you have to use the natural drying process for your clothes then you have the geyser as i've already told you what are the time frames for using your geyser it is definitely before 10 am that is you have to switch it off whenever you're not using your geyser and you have to reduce the thermostat setting from 60 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius and you can use solar water heater instead of your geyser then moving on to the next one is your gas stove so whenever you're cooking on a gas uh, gas burner you have to use moderate flame settings that will reduce or that will conserve your LPG and then you have to make sure that your stove needs to have blue flame that shows that your stove is operating efficiently and if at all it shows a yellow flame a yellowish kind of a flame it means that you have to clean your burner and make as much as you can make use of pressure cooking and then you have to use flat bottom pans rather than any other then acs as i've told you again big all summer crises are because of the acs so you have to make sure that you ensure proper sealing of your doors and windows only then you can use the optimal utilization of your air condition and you have to set your thermostat at 24 degrees celsius and you have to clean the ac filter every month then you have to prefer acs having automatic temperature 
cut off because it will conserve energy. So, by following these simple steps or simple tips one can save energy to a larger extent. So, individual each drop will count to the entire ocean. So, likely each individual can make loads and loads of difference to the entire energy conservation mechanism. So, as I have told you energy can be classed into two that is renewable and non-renewable energy sources and you have even seen what are the various sources of energy and then you have also known what is the importance of saving or conserving the energy which can be done from the individual front adding on to the uh, larger extent of conservation which will help us to sustain and have a better life. Thank you.